Hey guys, so we're gonna take a look at the tissue add-on that comes with Blender. This thing's actually pretty cool. Let me show you how you can kind of utilize it. So you just go to Edit Preferences, and, uh, look up Tissue, and enable the add-on. Okay. You see it's set up like so. All right. Now here's the thing. We're gonna take this cube, scale it down, and let's go ahead and just do loop cuts or the faces. Hit Alt Z to select through it. That's I to inset, I to inset and hold control. Hit I to inset. And hit I again to do individual. Okay. I'm going to inset again and hold control. Push it down like that. S, Z, and zero. X, delete faces. Okay. That's going to get rid of all that. A, and merge by distance. So we've created basically like a little window frame thing, right? So this is where it's going to get kind of interesting. Uh, what basically tissue does is it takes mesh and it distributes it across faces of another mesh, more or less what it's doing. So if you were to create something like a quad sphere, go to preferences, add-ons, enable uh, geometry extras over there. Just type extra, you'll find it. And you can create a rounded cube. Go ahead and use a um, quad sphere, for example. All right, so we're just going to utilize this. Jump into a side view while rotating, hit Alt. Edit mode, Alt Z, select all this at the bottom, vertices, scale this up. So maybe we're doing something like an environment. Maybe we want to create like a plane. Go ahead and drop in scale reference real quick. Just a character that's 1.8 meters tall. Help. So like this is like a biodome or a bird atrium. Something, I don't know. So we can go ahead and do this. Knock out those faces. Our piece is still in here. Let's pull it out for a second. Okay. Shift tilde key and WASD. You can fly around. But all right. So here's the thing you got to press in to bring out the side panel, right? And you'll see tissues down here. What we're going to do is select this and we're going to hold shift and select this. It's like doing a Boolean the moment. Except we're going to come up here, we're going to click Tessellate. Okay. Wait, before we do, I'm going to press Escape real quick. Go to Edit Mode. You smart UV protect this. Okay. I want to just prove a point here. If you look at this, it's UV map. Okay. And so uh, now we're going to do it. Select this, select this, click Tessellate. You got some settings here you can change. You can play around with these and just kind of see how they act and behave. Quite interesting the results you can get. but we're going to go ahead and click OK. Right? And what it's done is it's more or less created a new object. And it's just that mesh scattered across the faces of what was underneath. But it doesn't get rid of the, the base mesh either. So you can keep creating different things, perhaps, and running it across these as well. Um, but overall, this is what we got now. So let's just go ahead and hide that. So you can see you can make some pretty interesting stuff happen this way rather quickly. And it still has um, little segments we've created, but also go and look, we have VMAP still, which is the most important part. So we don't have to re unwrap this whole thing. That'd be crazy to do all that. So, and um, but yeah, yeah, we got it set up like this. Cool. So, all right, you won't have to set this out manually now. Just keep in mind it is dependent on that base mesh. So you can use other meshes but you want to make sure your faces are mostly even. Otherwise, you're going to have like some that become really squished because all this is stretching out to it. So you can see this one's actually a little bit wider. This one's not as wide. Okay, so It's very dependent on that base mesh. It's going to deform to it. But it's not too bad in a lot of situations. It works out quite well. It just happens to be one of them. You could try other things too, like... Just experiment with it if you want to try doing like a cone, for example. Cone real quick. Bottom face here. Cuts up if possible, which you can't really do on a cone. So we could do KCA or across it. Try to do something. Might be better to start with like a cylinder and squish it together. I'll do the top here. 
you could do like a taper or simple to form on a cylinder. So put it over here as well. So you can see that kind of set up there as well. Right? Of course it'll be stretched a little bit. I think you get the idea now. Pretty cool little add-on, I think. Uh, on top of that, you know, you can do some really interesting things, perhaps, if you create little walls for it and whatnot. So, uh, go through this process, have a little bit of fun with it. You do it on subdivided mesh, bevels and stuff like that as well. Really cool results, possibly, from that. And so I'm going to do this one real quick, just so you have an understanding of what happened there. But basically, you might want to use a cylinder that's really low resolution, like sided. So as you're working with this, you need to create perfect little squares, basically. It's going to be pretty dense by the end of it. We can work on that a little bit more. Shape there. So um, something like this, you might want to bevel. So you want to create squares, though. You got to overextend it a little bit. Where set flow add on will probably come in handy quite a bit. If you haven't used that add on, you gotta download it, but it's worth it. Set flow right here. It's all over. It's nice because now we can just take this app here. So we got this going on. It's cool. We press Control one subdivide it one time, apply it, and you see it's all pretty perfectly evenly spaced. Nothing that you could tweak, but we can do the same thing. So we'll grab this, this, tessellate. This base mesh, you don't have to get rid of it right away. You can grab a whole segment of edges, press E and V. Grab this, P, separate selection. Grab the base here using machine tools, all A, align bottom. Maybe add a solidify modifier to it. Auto smooth. So that'll still be UV unwrapped. That's part. You could even use this one on something like this, maybe. Maybe you want to do it down here for some reason, or you want to use it as is. Isolate to that too. It's going to stretch it really bad there. Okay. Stretches it quite a bit. The top over here. But it is possible to do it and you might have some fun with that. Maybe create some paneling and stuff for uh, spaceships or something. Who knows where it can go, right? It can go all kinds of ways. Matter of fact, let's try a panel real quick just because I'm curious. Do like a, a broken segment of panels. A couple of them. See if this even works. I haven't tried this yet, so I had a chance to play around with um, tissue much because it was crashing and the last time I tried it, I kind of gave up on it. Something I really wanted to use was the first time I seen it demoed. an object like this, do a tessellation of that across this one first. And there we go. Adds quite a bit of interest to that side section. Of course, um, bring that back. So we tessellate that across this. You see how that worked out. Let's try doing uh, scale. Let's try doing two. Happens. Okay. See there. 
if we can't do an offset of point seven. I'm curious if it's moving in. Put the scale back down for one. Offset it a little. All right. Not quite what I would want for that. I think it's competitive, but pretty interesting. Oh, side note, if you're taking things into Unity, create the, the project folder. I put a I create a temporary folder. See here. Issue testing. I could just save this over there. In the Unity project, automatically work. Because this file was already placed here. Faces are backward. Yeah, pretty interesting, right? There. Not fully optimized. Probably won't want to do that too much, but yeah, you can basically ex or save your Blender files to your project folder, and you'll see it'll load up right here. Not only do I have that one, I have a little test section here I was playing around with earlier. One. Globe thing in here. Playing around with the roof. And another one as well, much larger. Like a little. This isn't nothing to do with tissue, but if you want to play around with creating some like architecture. It could be uh, useful to you, right? So you can just bring Blender files in like that. Here's a couple things you got to do to prep it, though, if you're going to try to walk around on it. And it's not proper, so don't use it for an actual environment. But, like, see things in Unity real fast. It's cool. And so to prep for them, usually. Uh, go to the model assets there. Just check uh, generate colliders and click apply. Pretty much it. Okay. The HDRP. Check out the sample scene. It has all a lot of info on how to set up lighting and what. Best part is the scripts here. Drag and drop the uh, build controller player controller here drag and drop that in here use it but you have to delete the default camera you don't have one already now ladders we have the controller we can go ahead and press play and run around inside this scene a little bit quite a bit of fun you had with all this these colliders by the way are not very optimized for this kind of mesh so Eventually going to start hurting your performance, but overall, it's pretty cool to do this kind of stuff. Oh, the collider or the pill itself, by the way, player controller, should I say? Change the height a little bit lower, and you might want to change the radius as well. A more accurate reflect the most player character models if it's at 1.8 meters tall. 0.25, I think, is more accurate. Go to 0.3. But either way, if you make it larger, it doesn't matter. Because if you make your doors larger, as long as they're proportional, they still look correct for the most part. Anyways, but yeah, have fun with this. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll check you out in the next one. All right. Take care.